guys, welcome back to the channel and you catch me in 300 ZX twin turbo. This is actually it's actually in this hand fairly this because this is an import. Um I believe this was a, a one owner car from new and then my friend who owns this car now um, he's added it to his collection because he's got quite a big collection of Nissan Skylines um, 33, 34, 32 he's now got this um, and if I'm honest with you this is a beautiful car it really is a beautiful car you can tell it's been very 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 well looked after it drives absolutely mint it drives phenomenal 70,000 kilometres I believe that is with it being an import, it's got this lovely velour interior. Seats are really comfortable. I mean, I'm a chunky lad, he's quite a chunky lad. And, and the seats are really supportive, they're really nice, really supportive. It's got this lovely retro sort of Kenwood. It's not a double din, it's actually two separate, uh, like two separate two separate units so i think i think one is a cd player and one's a cassette but that's actually really really cool it's like really cool and retro it's got like all these different patterns i've seen to go onto the cd player so it's got like a bit of an equalizer style to it this car is actually basically stock as well so it's stock 286 horsepower in this i'm rated this car as as per the japanese gentleman's agreement however I honestly don't believe that this is a 286 horsepower car. I think that these cars were closer to the 300 horsepower. This one isn't a manual, sadly. It's actually an automatic. Four speed auto that's been used in a lot, a lot of cars throughout the Nissan years, as well as other, other vehicles throughout the years as well. These cars are actually really, they've aged really well. I mean, this is a, this car came out 1989, this car came out. So that's like 33 years ago, this car originally came out. This is a, a 94L, so it's like a, a slight facelift. Production years, 1989 to about 99, 2000, I think, is when the last one sort of rolled off the production line. You can get like a very early to mid 2000 registered cars in Japan. These are fetching mad money now. Really, really are fetching mad money. It goes really well. It's nice, it's quick, it's quiet, it's, it's comfortable. The suspension's not too harsh. It's got this beautiful black paint work. You've got the T-bars as well. <laughs> That's definitely an 80s design, that, or 70s design, 70s, 70s or 80s design. But it, you know, it drives really well, and I, I love the look of it. I really do love the look of it. I think they're always a, a fantastic looking car to look at, and I think they're even better looking now. So yeah, this is it's quite rare to find a, a bone stock example of a 300 ZX. As I was saying, this has about 286 horsepower, three liter V6 twin turbo, the VG 30 DETT, and when it first came out, it was so far ahead of its game. It really was so far ahead of its game. Mitsubishi counter-offered this Nissan's flagship car with the Mitsubishi GDO, which had a, a three-liter V6 twin turbo. These cars also came in a three-liter V6 non-turbo. They also came in a hard top, which was what they called the slick top that was only available on short wheel bases, I believe. Um, you did also get a convertible option as well as a T-barred uh, short wheel base. Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not too sure on that one, but I do know that the short wheel bases are the cars which are more sought after. I remember seeing about four or five years ago a Midnight Purple, I think it was a 99 2000 Ridge, that went into auction in Japan. A beautiful car, short wheel base, slick top, manual, twin turbo, and it went for like £25,000, and that was such strong money then. But now, 
and we're looking and trying to find a short wheelbase one and it's just it's just ridiculous it is absolutely ridiculous these cars actually while they were so far ahead of the time not a lot of people like to work on them because they are such a complicated engine and with all of the wiring and the vacuum pipes and, and so on and so forth it's quite easy for the 30 year old wiring to just degrade uh, which is exactly what happens the, the wiring just degrades and uh, that's due to the heat soak that this massive three litre twin turbo puts out it drives so well it's quick it's quick it really is even by the day standards this car is quick and because you're, you're so low down it's really really a slippery car and because you are literally inches off the floor you you do feel like a race car driver i'm not gonna lie you do you feel like a race car driver from the beginning we're gonna be test driving two cars one's this the 300 zx and i'm going to be test driving a r33 gtr and trying to compare the two of them Like I said, this car, it, it looks fantastic, drives fantastic. Fun fact, the headlamps of it. On a facelift, Lamborghini Diablo are the same as what you'd find on a Z32 300ZX. So there's a fun fact for you. This is rear wheel drive as opposed to the R33 GTR, which technically is rear wheel drive until it loses traction and then it becomes four wheel drive. Um, I don't believe the 300ZX had four wheel steering, although I do have to check that. The R33 GTR definitely has um, the Intesa four wheel drive system and the, um, the four wheel steering, which is the high cast system. I think that the high cast system could have been an option on these cars. This drives really, really nice. Okay, once uh, he's, uh, he's he's going for it. He is. He's going for it. It's agile. It's agile. I mean, it's quite a heavy car um, as, as opposed to you know back in those days you had the Porsche. They were a little bit lighter and stuff like that. But this is it, it's you know it's quite a big car. It's two plus two. This one, so you got four seats. You actually had leg room in the in the back, unlike the Porsche and the Mitsubishi GTO of the time so you can actually sit four people in this um, fairly comfortably I'm not going to say very comfortably but you can you can fit four people in there fairly comfortably obviously you'd put the vertically challenged people in the uh, in the in the back there but yeah like I said it's a um, beautiful car absolutely beautiful and I just can't get over how well it drives because Keep in mind folks, I mean this is a 94L so it's 28 years old and it just drives absolutely phenomenal. I know um, my friend said putting this in his collection was just a bit of a no-brainer. It was, it was just a bit of a no-brainer. And he says, you know, he, he prefers the 33, he prefers his Skylines but this does drive nice. I quite like the layout of the dash. I like how you've got the Velo glove box, which is quite strange to see because usually that would be like a vinyl and you know so on and so forth. But you know, underneath the dashboard, that's all vinyl. So that's all Velo. The glove box, you know, that design Velo, and then it sort of goes into the door trims. Obviously, if you had a car with leather, that would then be leather. But it's actually quite nice to see the the Velo interior on this, and just like the the. the like the design of the cabin it just really does it really does give the car a very aesthetically pleasing look nice sharp bend here like and it's just there's no drama there's no roll stock car stock suspension stock wheels i don't know what tires are on this but i think they're actually quite good it boosts really really well really really well it boosts it's a 
nice place to be, like this cabin, I think because of the tea tops, and obviously doesn't have the covers on the tea tops. Uh, it's really nice, it's really light, it's really airy, it's spacious. I love cars from this era. I do, sorry I was just trying to avoid the pothole there. <laughs> I just saw the 33 GDR sort of like leap and go around, so yeah. Yeah, but uh, no, I, I love cars of this era. This is probably where automobile history was at one of its best times is the 90s. Absolutely. You know, I mean, the 90s, 90, 94, 95, you had, you know, so many epic, and I mean epic cars. So the 300ZX is a bit of a timeless classic for me. It's beautiful. It's got that low sports car look. It handles so well, like it really handles superbly. It handles absolutely amazing. The 33, I absolutely love the 33 GDR. Probably one of my all time favorite cars. Definitely my favorite Skyline. You always love a Skyline, whether it's a 32, a 33, a 34, you've always got a favorite. For me, it's the 33. For me, that 33 is just, it's the winner. Don't get me wrong, the 300ZX is absolutely superb. But that 33 GDR, absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. So, guys, here we are, part two. We are in the R33 GDR. This is a really, really special variant of the R33 GDR. This is actually what they call the UK V spec. Now the UK V-Spec had active LSD, 25mm lower suspension, still had the 286 horsepower, as per the Japanese gentleman's agreement. Very much similar to the 300ZX, it did develop more, but as per the Japanese gentleman's agreement, Nissan stuck to the 286 for the uh, purposes of uh, taxes this car with it being a, a UK V spec 97 ever made 97 that was it there was nothing more 97 three of them were prototype cars and this is finished in the um, KH I think it's KH2 or KH3 black which is the I think it's like a Kuro black I think they call it one of ten one of ten UK cars finished in black and that's it there's nothing, there's nothing more, nothing less. It's just, there's just 10. And that was 10 when the first came out. So I'm not entirely sure what exactly is, um, is still around. Cause obviously, you know, it's a UK 33 GTR. This UK 33 GTR, it drives so nice. It literally drives like it just came out the showroom. Gear changes are really nice and tight. Performance, really good. 128,000 miles on this and you just, you wouldn't even think it had 12,800 miles on it. Honestly, it drives so nice. Series 3 um, is all of the UK cars. So the Series 3, you had the lower air dam. So it was like a bit of a slightly deeper splitter on the car. UK cars, you did have uh, rear mounted transmission oil coolers, which were just behind the, the attached to the differential at the rear obviously all UK cars with V-Spec so you know you had the active LSD you had the MPH Speedo it was actually MPH and KMH so you had like you know both both continents I love the 33 GDR absolutely amazing GT car this and um, I've said before I said you know you, you love a certain skyline some people do 32 some people do 33s i've owned quite a few 33s before so for me my ultimate car is the 33 gtr and this just drives perfect it honestly can't get over how well it drives can't get over how well this thing drives lovely interior so in the series three you got, uh, sometimes you got Xenon, sometimes you just got the standard headlamps. I think it was an option on these cars. Not all UK cars had Xenons, so uh, don't think that because it wasn't true. If it was spec with it, it had them. You got Brembo's, so you got four-part Brembo's front, 
two pop Brembo's rear. This is actually a pretty stock car apart from the exhaust system. Now the exhaust system on this is a, I think it's a HKS Hypermax. Sounds lovely. Really brings out that straight six. 300 ZX was actually the, the flagship car uh, for Nissan and that was a car that was sold over here in America, in Japan. It was a really, really well sold car and you know the 33 GDR, the 33 GDRs were only ever sold in the Japanese market and you then got the imported cars that Middlehurst brought in which were done under Nissan GB. So like I said, that's the only two markets that you actually had the R33 GTR. UK V specs had different chassis numbers as well. Didn't just have different chassis numbers as I've explained some of the differences. You actually got different indicators. The um, front bumper, so you had different indicators. You also had a revision on the passenger side where it had a vent for the oil cooler and then on there you have the carbon guide for the oil cooler as well. Series 3 you've got the red stitching in the interior and these seats are lovely, they really really are lovely, lovely seats. This thing just... Oh. That 300ZX was a nice car but this thing is something else. This thing is something else. I've driven hundreds, and I mean hundreds, of Skylines over the years. I really have. And it takes a lot for me to go, wow, this is one of these cars. This is the wow car. I know the owner, a very good friend of mine, he said to me, when I asked that car, will knock your socks off with how well it drives. And it has. Absolutely, it drives superbly, this thing. Suspension's nice, you've got stock suspension on here, 245, 45, 17 advanced sports, it handles well. Obviously, unlike the 300 ZX, so that's predominantly, well, the 300 ZX is permanent rear wheel drive. This is uh, predominantly rear wheel drive until you lose traction, and what happens is the tester system then kicks in and brings the front wheels in, so you get like a four wheel drive non-permanent, not like a Subaru, a Preza or an Evo or anything like that, it's, it's, it's based on a traction control system by the Atessa unit. Obviously, 33 GTRs, I think these were absolutely cracking cars. And I know that everybody sort of said they were a bit of a bore, a bit of a marmite, not many people liked them, but so much more space. They did share quite a lot of the Nissan parts bins on these cars, so you had things like the steering wheel, which has been on every single Nissan model in the 90s with the airbag, you know, Almeras, Primeras, Nissan Patrols, Nissan Toronto's, some of the switches you can just tell straight away it's from a Primera or an Almera. Now, like I said, the prices on the 300 ZX have gone up massively. If you know your Skyline market the way I do, and I actually do predictions on the uh, trajectory of the Nissan Skyline market for a living, I'm basically um, part of the GDR Heritage Centre, sales manager, marketing manager, automotive consultant. So the prices on these cars have gone up by about 400%. And a lot of people go, 400%? Are you kidding? This is a 90s Nissan. 400%. This car, seven years ago, you could have got easily eight, nine thousand pounds easily. This car in its current condition, and keep in mind, it's a clean car. It's a clean car, you know. It doesn't need a lot of work, but you know, it, it, it is a clean car. It's worth sixty thousand pounds in its current condition. Sixty, because it's one of the ten UK black cars. It's worth sixty thousand pounds easy. And I know that the owner has actually booked into the GDR Heritage Centre for a nut and bolt rebuild, full nut and bolt restoration. He's booked in to have that done, along with a couple of these other 33s and 32 GDRs. just 
realized Cammy's driving the 300ZX. Now the 33 GDR isn't exactly, you know, a four by four like, but I mean, it can easily get over speed bumps. I can go over a speed bump without causing any damage to the car. Cammy, no, he's like, uh, <laughs> he's literally having to stop, fully stop to get over them speed bumps. But that's his, his favorite car between the two of these is a 33 GDR. He just loves it. He just loves it. To be fair, it's, it's an amazing car, this thing. It sounds unbelievable. It really does sound unbelievable, this thing. So guys, which one is it for you? Which car do you love? Is it the Z32 300 ZX? Or is it the R33 GDR? For me, it's the 33 all day long. I love the 300ZX, I do. I think they're beautiful cars. I think they're beautiful cars to drive. But my heart will always lie with the 33 Skyline. Will always lie with the 33 Skyline. And that's why I would choose the 33 GDR. So here, there you have it, folks. Just uh, like, share, comment, and subscribe below. And let me know which uh, which car do you like. Is it the 33 GDR or is it the 300ZX? Thanks very much for watching. Cheers. Bye.